Kenya and Tanzania are some of East Africa's most popular nations. And if you are interested in visiting these countries, then you want to watch this video till the end today. Stay tuned to learn more. <laughs> to inspire for travel and just in case you are new to my channel my name is Wimba Imani thank you thank you very much You're far too kind. thank you okay we are going to have a very interesting and insightful vlog today as we discuss the differences of living or perhaps visiting in two of East Africa's most popular nations and they are Tanzania and Kenya but before I go further, I would like to address something from the previous video that I did entitled Top 5 Reasons Why You Should Not Relocate to Africa. Now, the purpose of that video was not to create a deterrence with anyone, but rather to create awareness so people can be prepared once they arrive to an African nation, some of the challenges that they may experience so they'll be able to navigate in that society without facing any kind of shock or regret coming. I'll never forget a story I heard one, one time in London. Now, there was a time in London when a lot of people from the West Indies came after the Second World War. And a lot of them came to, of course, um, help build back the economy of um, Great Britain at the time. They, they made up a large percentage of the workforce after the World War, people from the West Indies. And when I say the West Indies, that's the Caribbean islands. So for example, Jamaica, St. Lucia, Dominica, and these places, right? A lot of them came to England. Now, there was a gentleman who didn't really understand the society of England at the time and he, he don't know what people do there or anything, but he had come for work to better his life. But he, when he arrived, he noticed that some people um, allowed their dogs to sleep in the house. And some, he, he observed that a partner of his allowed her dog to sleep on her bed. And he was really shocked about that. He said, I never expect um, the mother country, you know, growing up in where he was from in the Caribbean, I never expect to come to England and, and see people sleeping with dogs in the house. So he didn't understand the culture because where he's coming from, the dogs are kept outside. Had he been aware of, well, you know, these, this is how they do it. Uh, over there in England, he would have been better mentally prepared to not face such um, a cultural shock when he arrived in the society. So that was the purpose of the video, is just to prepare you mentally with some of the things that you may experience once you arrive there. Okay, safety between Tanzania and Kenya. Now, if you look on reputable websites like Noema, which produce data on crime statistics and things like that in various countries across the world, Kenya gets a higher rating in crime in comparison to Tanzania. Now, from my experience traveling between those two countries, I find that people are much more concerned about their safety in Kenya in comparison to Tanzania. Now, when I was in Kenya, I, was, uh, I wanted to go to a place called Thompson Falls, a beautiful waterfall um, in Kenya. It's located in the Rift Valley. And I was told that I shouldn't go by myself because sometimes there's some bandits who kind of hide in the bushes there and they could try to rob you. You really need to be careful. So people in Kenya find always worried and concerned about their safety. After all, they had um, experienced a lot of incidents in Kenya, major incidents in Kenya. And since then, people are, are very extra cautious where they go and various things like that. Another thing is in comparison to Tanzania, Kenya is known to be politically unstable, especially during the election period. Things like um, violence between various tribes who support um, different political parties is something, um, you know, fights and stuff like that happens during the election time. Not all the time, but there are some cases where it was very serious. So in Kenya, I, I do feel that um, 
people are very concerned about their safety in comparison to Tanzania. Now I've traveled the length and breadth of Tanzania. Sometimes I'm even going into forest areas by myself. And when I ask people, you know, is it safe to go? Is it safe to walk? They said, it's fine. It's not a problem. Everything's okay. No problem. Hakuna Matata. Haina Shida. No problem. That is the vibe in Tanzania for the most part. Now, petty um, crime do occur, but in comparison to Kenya, I feel that Tanzania is much more safer. Now, in saying that, that is my experience. Now, I do travel vlogging, so sometimes I, I like to take certain risk other tourists or visitors or people living there may, may not take. For example, I may want to visit the slum areas. I may want to visit certain forest areas. I may want to check out, uh, you know, different communities, which other tourists may not be interested in doing. So it all depends on what you are doing in the country. But a rule of thumb is in comparison between both nations, Tanzania does have a reputation for being much more safer than Kenya. Now let's talk about the tourism infrastructure between Tanzania and Kenya. From my experience, um, Kenya has a better tourism infrastructure. There are more hotels and backpackers, lodges and different things like that, which is set up for an international clientele. I find you will find more options in Kenya than you will in Tanzania. Also in terms of communication, for those who are coming from English speaking countries, maybe America or England, Kenya is on top when it comes to the English speaking. Now, many people there speak English very well, so you won't really have a problem with communication. Um, another thing is you will find that when it comes to prices of things in various tourism, um, touristic areas, it's much more laid out. Everything is quite straightforward. You know what the price you'll have to pay. A lot of things could be done online as well. And they also have an effective impesa system, which is a mobile money transfer, which, which is throughout the country, which makes paying for things much more easier. You could do a lot of things in advance. And in terms of finding like a guide, in Kenya now you know when you go to a place and you really want to get a tour of a certain historical site for example now if you're coming from English speaking countries you will find that there's people who can communicate with you very well to explain to you with things in detail about where you are visiting which is a great bonus apart from that there are, there are other people who can speak other language as well now coastal Kenya like Mombasa um, Lamu, Malindi and these places, you won't have a problem when you moving around those societies and getting people to communicate with. Another thing um, I'll say when you go to like the um, tours of the Maasai Mara and everything like that, it may be more affordable in Kenya, just a little bit in comparison to Tanzania. But on the other hand, Tanzania as well, you'll still find um, great um, places to visit. People, you do get people who can communicate with you in different languages as well. But I'll just say in Kenya, they have the edge in communication, especially in English language. Okay, let's talk about the immigration between Tanzania and Kenya. Now, I've noticed on the YouTube space, a lot of people are experiencing certain challenges, especially with the immigration in Tanzania. Now, I think it's important that we address some of these things. Now, during the pandemic, a lot of people came to Tanzania in their numbers. And the reason for that was because there wasn't any restrictions in Tanzania. You didn't have to get a vaccine. You, you know, you could have walked around without wearing a mask. The country was open and a lot of people came to Tanzania and they fell in love with the beauty of the country and with some of the hospitality of some of its peoples and they wanted to extend their time there. Now the immigration was not used to dealing with so much visitors wanting to extend their time um, at, at once. It was a lot of people doing it at one time so they had to update their policies to kind of put a cap on how much extensions they can give at one given time. Now, 
it's important to understand that if you're a person that comes to say for a vacation in Tanzania and you want to extend your time in Tanzania, you don't have any business, you don't, you're not married to anyone there, you just really enjoy the experience and you want to stay in the country because you like it, you want to explore, then the immigration might give you a bit of a challenge because at the moment they're really trying to attract people who are investors to Tanzania. So investors generally have a more easier dealings with the immigration there, right? People who are married to Tanzanian citizens there as well will have a more easier experience to some degree. Then you have people who are, let's say, in a business partnership with the Tanzanian citizens then they will be able to navigate a bit more smoother when it comes to the immigration. So these are some things to take into consideration when dealing with the immigration in Tanzania. Now, a rule of thumb, generally, um, if you leave, if you have like a one year visa and you leave the country at three months interv intervals and then return you should be able to, you know, get get get, a, get the extension and not have any problems. But there are some people who are experiencing some of the problems still with the immigration, even after leaving and coming back. So it's a bit of a gray area at the moment. Not everyone experience is the same. I've met some people who have no issues getting the extensions. Whereas there are some others who may have a challenge getting the ext the extensions and stuff like that. A lot of the time, um, families may have a bit of a challenge perhaps, and maybe people with children. A lot of time, if it's someone who is solo traveling, it might be a bit more easier, but I can't say that this is certain set in stone. It all depends. Sometimes it even comes down to who you really meet on the day in the immigration. Now, if we look at Kenya, I'll say Kenya is better um, structured to uh, have a better structure to deal with foreigners who want to extend their stay in Kenya. Now, for example, generally speaking, you will get a three months visa in Kenya. If you're coming from a country that needs a visa to go to Kenya, you get a, a, a visa. And when you want to extend the visa, you don't have to leave Kenya or anything like that. You can go to the immigration office and they'll extend your stay for another three months so you can stay up to their free six months in Kenya without having to, to leave the country right and then if you do leave you can always go and come back and for the most part from my experience and speaking to other people they have a much more easier dealings with the immigration in Kenya now that's not everyone but those who are, I have met and my experience that has been the case so it all depends on really what you're doing, I guess, in each of those countries. Now, still at the moment in Tanzania, you don't need to have, let's say, like a COVID vaccine to get entry into Tanzania, whereas Kenya, you still do, right? You need a, the COVID vaccine to be allowed entry there. Now, that is a gray area and it all depends on your beliefs. So that is something that you will just have to bear in mind when you're thinking about these two countries. Now let's talk about the cost of living. Now I won't go into detail, but I'll just share with you my experience and some of my observation traveling between both countries. Now, if you're buying locally produced food or you're eating at local restaurants, I find Tanzania is a much more affordable country if you're doing things like that. Now, if we look at the currency conversion, 1,000 Tanzanian shillings equals to around 50 Kenyan shillings. Now, for 1,000 Tanzanian shillings, I can get a good meal, which consists of rice, fish, um, I can get salad, I could also get even get a glass of juice, right? For, and that's for 1,000 Tanzanian shillings. In Kenya, which, which will equal to 50 shillings, I won't be able to get something like that. So that's something you will have to think about. Also, in terms of fruits and vegetables and things like that, I find it much more affordable in Tanzania. Now, that is if you're, if you're buying locally produced fruits and vegetables from the markets and stuff, the open-air markets, right? Now, if you want to shop in 
big supermarkets and you're more interested in buying things from your home country, maybe America, the United Kingdom, Canada, and things like that, you'll find that the prices are a bit similar between both countries, right? You'll find the prices is pretty much the same. In terms of transport, moving around, Uber, buses, I find Tanzania is cheaper than Kenya. After all, Kenya currency is a bit higher than Tanzania and once you do your conversion maybe from US or pound sterling, you'll find that it's a bit more cheaper for transport in Tanzania than Kenya. Okay, when it comes to the internet between the two countries, guys, now from my experience, Kenya gets number one for that. I remember I had to do um, upload some videos in the southeastern towns in Tanzania and I had a big problem with that because I was only getting 3G or 2G network in the southeastern part. Whereas when I was in Kenya, I traveled to a few cities like Mombasa, Kisumu, Nakuru, Kakamega and these towns and cities, I had no problem uploading a video. I got very, very good internet connection in Kenya. So. Kenya is number one for that. Another thing, information technology is a big thing in Kenya. After all, it, Nairobi is known as the Silicon Valley of East Africa. You'll find a lot of people who are into the information technology business. They are based there. And I had a friend who developed an app using only software developers from Kenya and his business continues to be successful. So these are things you will have to really take into consideration. If you're someone that really relies on the internet, you may find that you may get better service in Kenya in comparison to Tanzania. Now saying that in Tanzania, in the major cities like Dar es Salaam, Arusha, Mwanza, you do get good connections. But if you're really going to like the smaller cities, and towns in Tanzania, you may experience a great dip in the quality of the internet that you will get there. Okay, when it comes to the nightlife and partying and stuff like that, Kenya has a lot of options and especially in cities like Nairobi where you have a larger middle class population and people with more spending power, people are going out and having a great time and there are a lot of bars and nightclubs and stuff in Nairobi, Mombasa, all the major cities and literally there's something every day. So if you're someone who likes experiencing the nightlife and things like that, then Kenya may be a better option for you. Now, the fact that a lot of people also speak English there as well, you, you won't be sure of finding people that you can communicate with when you go to certain um, clubs and stuff. I find in Tanzania, if you're not able to communicate in Swahili in some of the clubs, there may be a bit of a communication barrier. So that's something for those who don't speak the language. So that's something you might want to take into consideration if nightlife is your thing. But I do find that when it comes to partying, Kenya party hard, man. They know how to party over there. Like every day of the week, you will find, um, more in Tanzania, for the most part, Tanzania is a, a conservative society. Now, you do get people who I say are like transformers. So in the day, they're in the gowns and stuff, but in the nighttime, they're out in short dresses and, and different things like that. But for the most part, Tanzania is a conservative society, especially on the coastal um, areas in Tanzania. It's highly influenced by the Islamic and Muslim culture and you know it's important for you to be aware of that so that for when it comes to nightlife you may not have a great you may have a greater experience in Kenya in comparison to Tanzania okay so both countries guys are amazing I find that in Kenya they really embrace the principles of capitalism and that could be traced back to the first president of um, Kenya, whereas in Tanzania, they embrace the whole um, concept of socialism, right? And that could be traced back to the first president of Tanzania. So very interesting nations and depending on what you, your needs are, 
a certain country may be suitable for you. Some people may prefer the vibe in Tanzania, while others may prefer Kenya. So it all depends on what you're looking for. And if there's anything I didn't mention in today's vlog, let me know what else you would like to know and I'll see if I can produce some content on that. But both of the countries are amazing and you know, I had a great experience there and I, will, I would like to add that visiting both countries, I never had any really um, problems for my safety per se. I wasn't attacked or anything like that. And I was welcome and treated well. Now they're good and bad in every society. And I'm not going to paint the picture that everyone is friendly and welcoming in Tanzania and or everyone are friendly and welcoming in Kenya. There's a negative and positive, but for me, it's been um, positive experiences. Um, some of the challenges I did face was the driving in both countries, uh, you know, wow, the driving can be serious, you know, like really, you know, put your seatbelt on, that's all I'm saying, because they drive really fast there depending on where you're going, but apart from that, it's been a great experience guys, so I do appreciate you watching my videos, and yeah, like, share, subscribe, peace out, I'm Wimba Imani.